If you're having trouble getting hair whittling edges, it may not be the stone, the strops, or the technique that's the problem. It may actually be the knife itself. So let's take a look at two different scenarios to show you exactly what I'm talking about. First, we'll sharpen the worst knife steel that I own on the worst sharpening stone that I own. Second, we'll sharpen one of the best steels that I own on, again, the same worst sharpening stone. And I'll show you the difference between the edges that these two knives produce. Now the worst stone that I have is a cheap aluminum oxide 1000-6000 grit. If you want to know more about the stone, check the link video in the description below. In my opinion, these are the worst stones for pretty much every scenario. They require soaking, which is time consuming. They are very soft, making consistency a challenge. They wear out fast and are the messiest things imaginable. They are bought for a couple of dollars by companies and then rebranded and sold on Amazon, marked up 20,000%. I paid $40 for this stone just to check out the brand, when in reality I should have only paid $3 because it's the exact same stone. That makes these the worst stones currently available in my opinion. First knife is probably going to hurt some people's feelings, but it is the worst knife that I own and it's a Schrad Old Timer. Now for my research, this knife was made between 1995 and 2004. I bought this knife years ago in Walmart and I believe it is 440A stainless steel blade. Unfortunately, this is one of the worst steels I currently have in terms of sharpening ability. I believe it has a poor quality heat treatment and it has an extremely low hardness of 55 HRC which further reinforces that theory. Whatever the case, it just does not get super sharp very easily. The initial edge on the shade doesn't really matter since we'll be sharpening it, but here it is anyway. I start on the cheap aluminum oxide 1000, and after a while, since it is 1000 grit, I apexed and then moved on to the 6000 and a 6 micron and 1 micron diamond strut. We did get it sharp. It is sharper than it was before, okay? And it is shaving. It will pull hairs off, but it's not super comfortable. You would not want to shave your face with this, and you kind of have to push it into your arm in order to shave. Uh, you guys will probably know what I'm talking about when you get to a point where it's not like popping, the hairs aren't jumping off of the blade. You're kind of like ripping them out, if that makes sense, or you're pushing the blade into the hairs in order to shave. I mean, I wouldn't be able to like really kind of mess around with it if it was that sharp. It's just not super great. Um, it's not up to my standards. And this is, as, this is absolutely as sharp as I can possibly get this on this setup. And it's, it's really as sharp as I can get it, period. This, this knife just does not want to get to a razor uh, sharp edge that easily. So now we move on to the shop ugly knife. Now, you knife makers out there, please don't laugh at this. This was a test blade I made years ago and it's been treated very poorly, testing everything from belts to different grinds, etc. However, it is a two tool steel at 64 HRC. It has a great heat treatment on it and it is one of the easiest knives I own that'll get hair whittling sharp. So here we are sharpening the A2 on the exact same setup, 1,000, 6,000 grit aluminum oxide. Yeah, I mean, that feels, that feels really sharp. A six micron M1 micron diamond strap. And even off of this extremely poor sharpening stone, this knife was absolutely hair whittling without even trying. So we have the same hair the same knife, sharpened in the same way. Not even close. Pops it immediately. So I didn't know how well this was going to actually show on camera, but after viewing the pictures, I think it's pretty obvious. You can clearly see the A2 tool steel is capable of achieving a much finer apex, while the Charade 440A almost looks muddy in comparison. Now I don't know exactly the reason behind why this is the case. I don't know enough about 440A's heat treatment to be able to diagnose why this is the case. Grain growth, retained austenite, I have zero clue. What I do know is that your stone and sharpening equipment likely has very little to do with the fact that you can't get a hair whittling edge. 
We can even further show this by sharpening a steel like Rex 45 from this Manix 2 at 66 HRC. This knife was sent to me from Jared over at Neves Knives. On the same aluminum oxide stone in 6 and 1 micron straps. There it is. Hair whittling. Rex 45 off of a cheap aluminum oxide stone. I've also had this exact discussion with Jared over at Neves Knives. I think the the higher, harder, the harder steels and um, even just the, the better steels, like the more premium steels, I find that mm -hmm. they, they not only get sharper, but they also, I mean, carbon steels do really well too, but the, the burr removal is so much easier, the harder it is. And I find the actual, uh, when you're, so, when I have sharpened like super soft steels that were just factually sharp or factually soft, it's almost like, I feel like my stone is almost like pushing the steel more than just grinding it off. If that makes sense, uh, where it almost, it's yeah, like- I know exactly. It's like plastic hold... deformation versus abrasion, if that makes right, sense. Right, exactly. So when it's harder, I find that I can hold my angle easier. It, it, it grinds the steel off flatter and just gives a more you know crispier result and then again the burst comes off so much easier so to me every way it's easier so i'm asked all the time why can't i get my knife hair whittling sharp i can get it paper cutting sharp i can get it shaving sharp but it will not whittle hairs now it's very difficult to diagnose sharpening issues via the youtube comments or email or something like that but one thing that I always say time and time again is that you need to take a very close look at the exact steel that you're sharpening. If you're using a very poor quality steel with a poor quality heat treatment at a low hardness level, you're gonna have a very difficult time getting that knife very sharp. Make sure you're using a knife from a manufacturer that has a good reputation for providing good heat treatments on your knives. I realize the fact that not everybody has a Rockwell hardness tester in order to test the HRC of your knives. Now I also want to make it clear that having the correct sharpening equipment can certainly make sharpening easier. I am not recommending cheap aluminum oxide stones, especially for beginners. Quality sharpening equipment makes things easier, quicker, less messy, and a whole lot more enjoyable. It can also matter more the less experienced you are, making it much easier to hold specific angles as well as how the knife feels on the stone. However, the steel you're sharpening largely dictates how easily you'll be able to sharpen and how sharp your knife will ultimately become. Just again, make sure that you're using a knife, a quality knife from a quality manufacturer. It just cuts it before I can almost even get it in the frame. That has a good reputation for providing good heat treatments on their knives. Mm -hmm.